Hello, this is Xbox Ahoy, and this is Time to Kill. Positioning is key in Modern Warfare 3. Whether aggressively rushing or playing with a more conservative approach, your location will do much to determine your success. In this episode, we're covering mobility. Your base movement speed is determined by the weapon you carry. Heavier weapons will slow you down, whereas others will let you move unhindered. SMGs and shotguns are the fastest weapons available. When using these, you will move at maximum speed prior to any modifiers. Assault rifles and some of the sniper rifles, the L118A, the MSR and Dragunov, grant intermediate mobility at 0.9 times movement speed, a 10% penalty when compared to the fastest weapons. The LMGs, Riot Shield and remainder of the sniper rifle category, the Barrett, Arsas and AS50, are the slowest weapons available, each decreasing your movement speed to 0.8 times the maximum, a 20% penalty overall. Secondary weapons adopt the movement speed of your primary, so switching to a pistol while using an LMG will not grant a boost to your mobility like it did in Black Ops. However, picking up two secondary weapons will grant you maximum mobility. If you're using the overkill perk, your base movement speed will be that of the slowest weapon you carry, so an SMG paired with a shotgun will retain 100% mobility, while carrying an LMG with a riot shield will not reduce your base movement speed below 80%. Your stance also affects your movement speed. Standing up is the fastest means of getting about, with no penalty to your movement. Crouching will slow you down to 65% of your base movement speed, and going prone will reduce your speed further to a mere 15% of your base speed, a snail's pace. Moving laterally will also slow you down, at least slightly. While moving forwards, you'll travel at full speed, but when strafing or reversing, you'll move at 97.5% of your maximum speed. Aiming down your sights also imposes a movement penalty, the degree of which depends on your weapon class. SMGs, machine pistols and handguns will allow you to move at 0.8 times base speed while aiming. This will stack with other penalties, so, for example, moving while aiming and crouching with an SMG will result in a mobility a little over half your base movement speed. Assault rifles, LMGs, shotguns, snipers and launchers will move more slowly whilst aimed, with a 0.4 times multiplier. Should you employ Stalker in your third perk slot, however, the penalty for aiming is completely removed, allowing travel at your normal rate while aiming down your sights particularly useful with these slower weapons. The LMGs, sniper rifles and riot shield all have a speed proficiency available, which will affect your movement speed with that weapon. The proficiency acts as a straightforward 1.1 times multiplier, so the LMGs, riot shield and slow sniper rifles will move at 88% of maximum speed, and the fast sniper rifles will move at 99% speed, almost as fast as an SMG or shotgun. The speed bonus only applies to the weapon in question though, so you lose the 1.1 times multiplier should you switch to your secondary, or replace your primary with another weapon. When using the specialist strike package, you will gain the speed proficiency when you reach 8 kills, or 7 with hardline. This applies even to weapons that normally wouldn't have the option of increased movement speed, but does not apply to a weapon that already has the speed proficiency active. Finally, the Juiced Death Streak will apply a temporary multiplier to your movement speed, granting 1.25 times your base speed for 10 seconds. Another major component of your mobility is sprinting. Sprinting sacrifices your ability to fire your weapon for increased movement speed, allowing aggressive players to reach critical objectives first and to surprise slower opponents. Sprinting will increase your movement speed by 50% allowing you to cover more distance in a shorter time span. However, your ability to sprint is limited by your stamina. Your sprint endurance is around 4 seconds by default, permitting faster movement for that length of time only. After expending the sprint endurance, you can walk normally, but won't be able to sprint again for a couple of seconds, and won't regain full endurance until sometime after that. You can increase your sprint duration with the use of extreme conditioning in your first perk slot, this will double your available sprint time to around 8 seconds, 
allowing for positional advantages and earlier intervention at objectives. Note that while extreme conditioning will double your stamina reserve, it does not increase the speed at which it recovers, meaning that a longer rest period without sprinting will be required to fully recharge your stamina. Certain weapons also confer an advantage to your endurance. The MP9, Scorpion and USAS-12 will all act in a similar way to extreme conditioning, granting a 1.8 times multiplier to your endurance while you have the weapon equipped. In addition, this effect will stack with extreme conditioning, granting a possible 3.6 times multiplier to your endurance and nearly 15 seconds of continuous sprinting. There's no doubting the importance of movement in Call of Duty. Elevated mobility will allow you to evade and outmaneuver your opponent, and covering more ground more quickly will lead to more encounters with an unready foe. With the weapons and perks at your disposal, you can take advantage of the speed benefits on offer, press your mobility advantage, and leave your opponent in the dust. After all, the right man in the wrong place can make all the difference in the world. Thanks for watching, this has been Xbox Ahoy. Join me next time when I'll be covering the mechanics behind weapon reloads in detail. Until then, farewell.